Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together, ye gather together, O nations not desired. There's the United Nations. United Nations is according to the Bible. Imagine, God already knew what the nations would do. And they didn't even know what they were doing when they did it. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, before the great tribulation period, the nations are going to gather together. Something about the nations are going to gather together before they come into Jerusalem under Nebuchadnezzar's army. Before all this, seek ye the Lord. That's the salvation. That's what will get you out. All ye meek of the earth. Of the earth. Gentiles. Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Seek the Lord, seek righteousness, and seek meekness. There's no room for religion. There's no room for sin. And there's no room for proud. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. That's the only way he's going to get you out. If you seek the Lord, you're going to do what he tells you to do. You seek righteousness, you're going to do what is right. You seek to be meekness, you'll be humble. For Gaza shall be forsaken. And Ashkelon a, des a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday. And Ekron shall be rooted up. Cities destroyed. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, Mediterranean. The nation of the Cherimites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Cana, the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitants. The sea coast shall be dwellings and cottage for shepherds and folds for flocks, sheep. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah, the Jews. They shall feed thereupon. In the house of Eshkelon shall they lay down in the evening. The Jews are going to take over the land that was their land from the beginning. For the Lord their God will visit them and turn away their captivity. He's going to get rid of all these Gentile nations and he's going to give it to the Jews. All the Gentiles today are trying to get rid of Israel and take the land that's given to God is going to reverse it. And make the Jew victorious. I have heard the reproach of Moab. That's one of the children of Lot. And the revilings of the children of Ammon, the other child of Lot. Everybody is against the Jew. Whereby they have reproached my people. See, it's about the Jews. Matthew 25, the judgment is based upon them that treat the Jew right. It's not beating the mark. It's not a computer program. It's not defeating the Antichrist. It's your conduct, what you do with those Jews. And Jesus tells us they have no idea what they're even doing. And magnify themselves against their border. 
They're proclaiming that a land that's not theirs, it's theirs. That's exactly what's going on today. Jordan, the PLO, the United Nations, England, America have all told Israel one way or another, back off and give them a little piece of, piece of land, please. Be nice little Jewish people. You know, they never given Israel any more piece of land. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts. God's eternal. God is saying, I am I am making an oath by my longevity. The God of Israel. Ooh. I don't think Allah would love that. I don't think those that follow the Pope would enjoy that. I don't think Americans would enjoy that. I don't think communism would enjoy that. I don't think socialism would enjoy that, God. Of all the people from Adam to today, God says, Israel. You know what Jesus said? To defeat all, I am the way. How's that? Well, my grandpa, no, 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 no. The way. But I got this read. The way. Look at America of Israel. Don't you think the Chinese boast about their government of Israel? Surely Moab, which is the type of the flesh, shall be as Sodom. Well, what was Sodom? Destroyed, gone, not to be seen. Judgment of God. That's where Moab was from originally. In the loins of Lot, he was in Sodom. And the children of Ammon, that's pride, as Gomorrah. Cities that were destroyed because of sin. Even the breeding of the nettles, that's a prickled plant that causes pain. Listen, Sodom and Gomorrah shows up in the preaching of Jesus. As illustrations of nations, you're going to be just like them. America will be as Sodom, Gomorrah, or any of the neighboring cities. Because of sin. Jerusalem was like Sodom and Gomorrah. Because of sin. It wasn't just because of sodomy. It was all the sins. I believe it was Ezekiel or Jeremiah tells you what the sins of Sodom were. And it didn't have anything about sodomy, pride, abundance of bread, idleness. Read your Bible. Sodomy is just a sin. So is telling a lie to your wife. So is telling a lie to your boss. Hi, boss. I'm not <coughs> feeling well today. <coughs> Can't come in. That's just as worse as sodomy. Oh, you mean... Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin but not sodomy of the world. Behold the Lamb of God which take away my sins but not their sins of the world. It's all sin. America will fall because of sin. What sin? Rejecting what God has told her to do. What has God told her to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What is the message to the Gentiles in the tribulation period? Well, let's see what Jesus said. You fed me, you took me in, you visited me in prison, you healed up my wounds, you gave me food, you visited me. And what was the response? Lord, when do we do that? When do we feed you? When do we come to jail and see? When do we... He says, when you least do it unto one of my brethren. I didn't quote that verse completely. I misquoted it. Do you realize the salvation of the Gentiles in the tribulation period? They had no idea what they were doing. Out of the goodness of their heart. To save a group of people. They are rewarded with the millennial inheritance.
Big bad communism Russia is no worse off than America. Big mean Japanese people are no worse than America. Oh, those Chinese people, they're no worse than America. If they die without Christ, they go into the same hell. Yep. Now, there's different degrees of hell, but it's the same hell. Let me, wait a minute, hold on, Moab. This is a short chapter. Moab, let me think. No mercy, no grace at all, right? Can you name a young Moabitess girl under the condemnation of Moab that they're not to enter into the uh, the congregation of the Lord I forget what the rest of it was who's in the name of Jesus Christ in his genealogy who's a great 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 something like that grandmother of King David why did she get left out because she got right and did right Naomi is the one that did wrong. Get out of here. Go back to your God. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. We know, I, I know about your God. And wherever you go, I'm going to go. And the God that you serve is the God I'm going to serve. Yeah. And God stopped all heaven and said, what was that? What did that young lady say of Moab? Write that woman's name down. I want to take a note. He didn't say write down that woman's name. What's that book called? I'm not giving you the name. If you know your Bible, you know who. America is sinning. Now, I know of street preacher, street evangelist in the land here in Daytona Beach. We're in Daytona Beach. I know a brother in the Lord, a pastor on the streets of um, Las Vegas, the Strip, I believe. Uh, I know people who go on the green in New Haven, Connecticut. I know people somewhere in New York, I believe the Bronx, they go. I know people who go on the streets in Poland. I know people go on the streets of European nations. I know a lot of people go on the streets and preach the gospel and go door to doors. And I can name the places where they do it. And I said all that to forget what I was saying. There are people who go out there, I know, and witness. And you think America is such a great nation. A cop came up to me one time. He says, why are you doing what you're doing? I said, because the Bible says, go in all the world and preach God. I got my family to testify today. But you don't have a crowd. I'm not supposed to have a crowd. For the much of the people, the, the, the multitudes will go the broad way. What's wrong with America? Now, this is where I'm back on track again. When we all go, and throughout the world, not just America, and tell people how to get saved, and they just go on with their lives and don't do nothing, that's the sin. They're filthy before God with lying, stealing, cheating, and adultery and everything. Yes, they are. But there's one great sin that will cast you into hell. Rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, I don't see anywhere on the U.S. Constitution Jesus Christ or God written. They had the principles. They have no, no. Where is the name? Acts 4.12. There is no other name given by men whereby you must be saved. Where is that name on our document? If we had that name on the document, you could rule Islam out of America. If you had that name on that document, you could rule out the Jehovah Witnesses. Did you know that? They don't testify to Jesus Christ, do they? Now you have problems with the Catholics and the Mormons. You rule out the Hindus. These nations, including God's nation, has done the ultimate sin, rejected God and what he said. What was the, the, the sin that caused all sins? Don't eat that 
fruit. What did they do? They disobeyed God. Jeremiah, Joel, Ezekiel, Zephaniah, Malachi. All these books are, are harsh. Wrath of God. Gonna burn your butt. Because they won't listen to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. But if you do what God tells you to do, you get blessings. And saved. If I do, and listen, I'm a sinner, I do wrong. Don't get me as being perfect. But when I even do right with God, I got the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Listen, I'm through a time right now in my life, man. I got no job. I got a hole in my foot. My teeth are going away. I'm looking at next week's, next month's bill like, oh my God, how are we going to do it? And God is blessing me. And I'm, you know, I'm concerned, but I'm not petrified. I'm not doped up with pills and drinking alcohol. I'm just going to trust the Lord. He'll take care of you. But also for the Christian, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. You're not going to be without. There are people who suffer persecution because they're doing wrong. And there's some people who suffer in persecution because they're doing right. Try to figure it out. Right now, i got a thing in my life with my family. It was a family ministry. Is God trying to tell us to stop going to one place? Every time we go there, the door shuts. Or is it Satan trying to stop us? If God's trying to stop us, then we need to stop. If Satan's trying to stop us, then we need to keep going fighting. But when you're looking at these nations, the Old Testament, there's no thought about it. Reject what God has told you. You'll be judged. Now, what did God tell all these people? He told them even before they were a people. Moab and Ammon, before they were even thought of. Before the city had even started to be done wrong in Sodom and Gomorrah. God spoke to one man in Genesis 12. I know there was no Genesis 12. But God spoke to one man. You curse him and his descendants. And you better believe I will curse you. America's in danger. She won't study Germany no more. There are even people that say that World War II and the treatment of Jews never happened. You better not go that bold. Because Adolf Hitler and all his hatred for his Jew and his evolution teaching and his Catholic upbringing and Catholic goals of, of the Pope and all that, where did he end up? He took his own life in his own bunker and is in hell today. Probably the deepest hell for what? Going against God's people. You know what could be worse for Adolf Hitler? Think about all those Jewish women that he killed down there now beating the crap out of them. You don't want to mess with a Jewish mother. From what I've been told. I've been told that even the mafia are afraid. Of, you don't want to mess with the Jews. They are God's people. Even the breeding of nettles, that, like I said, that's a prickly plant that when it gets you, it causes pain. And salt pits. And perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them. The Jews are going to go into Moab and Ammon. Thank you, thank you. That's good. I can use that. I like that. Just like they did when they came into the land. And the remnant of my people shall possess them. The remnant. There's going to be Jewish people in eternity. No matter what churches are teaching you. Any church that teaches against the Jews from what the Bible says. You need to say, hey, this ain't God's church. You see why these act, these colored actors say, oh, I'm a apostolic Jew. Look at all the promises God has, has given them. When I conquer all the nations. There's only one nation that's going to be settled. That's the Jewish people. Wouldn't that make you a little uh, 
national pride there? Hey, it's us. And they've got that pride because they know. This shall they have for their pride. Uh oh That's Moab and Ammon. Because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts, England and Germany. America's not there yet. President Bush tried, but we had the perfect storm that came right up into his house. Study nations that have gone against Israel and find out what happened. Where's Babylonia today? Tell me where I can take my wife and my family and get on a plane and fly to go visit Babylonia. We really want to go see the heart, the hanging guard. The one of the ten wonders of the world. I want to go see the hanging gardens of Babylon. Why can't I see them? Nineveh conquered Israel. The second group of people. The first group was the two and a half tribes that stayed on the wrong side of the Jordan River. I can't think of it. One half tribe of Manasseh. All right. Nineveh came in and took the ten northern tribes and put them in captivity. Can we go visit Nineveh today, the city where Jonah went and preached? Can we go see where Jonah sat under that gourd and just say, oh, wow, this is where the angry. Where is Nineveh? I will curse them that curse thee. What is Germany today? It's a failure. Why? I will curse them that curse thee. The Lord will be terrible. And that doesn't mean that means mighty power to incite terror unto them. For he will famish all the gods of the earth. Ooh. You mean my God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is going to get the victory of all the gods? All the gods of this earth are Satan. He's just in different disguises. He's a one-man band. Satan will be whoever you want him to be. He'll be a needle. He'll be something you can smoke. He'll be a, a, a musical band. He'll be that big hunky guy. He'll be a theatrical performance. He'll be a little gold statue. He'll be a whole religion. Read John 8, 44. He's not the red man in a red suit with a pitchfork. The one with the pitchfork were the priest. Eli's boys. Get that down. And men shall worship him. God. Are they doing that today? That's not today. That is not today. Do you know a stupid fact in America today that atheists now have a church? What? Who do you worship when you go to church as an atheist? The empty space? Everyone from his place, wherever you are, wherever your house is, even all the isles of the heathen nations. Now, I don't know what those isles are. And I got a note in here that says coast, but that don't tell me nothing. I have no idea what isles are. I mean, they're islands, but what they are in the bible the oh yeah wow what was that ye, ye oh, can't say ye ethiopians tongue twister ye ethiopians also ye shall be slain by my sword why why are they so hard judged can you think wasn't there a colored man coming from jerusalem one day he went back with them with the gospel wasn't he reading Isaiah in his chariot? The first man that got saved in the Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, was an Ethiopian eunuch. Philip witnessed to him. Philip said, you better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before I baptize you. I believe Jesus Christ. 
And then he was baptized. And he took his Isaiah 53. And where did he go? He went back to the queen in Ethiopia. And if he's any right Christian, you know what he did? I hope he did. He opened up his big mouth and testified. While the apostles were still running around in the book of Acts, Ethiopians were getting saved. And I talked to an Ethiopian missionary. The guy's a little bit cuckoo, but I talked to him. There's the story of this guy coming back and preaching the gospel in the nation. It's a well-known story in Ethiopia. They were the first ones that got saved by the gospel. God, God foretold over 630 years. Because you were the first ones in line by the gospel, you are more prone. You had the light. What would you do with the light? Oh, I ran like a cockroach. The men love darkness. So also ye shall be slain by my sword. That comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. The word of God is going to get the Ethiopians. And that Ethiopian held the word of God in his hand. He was reading from Isaiah 53. Go back in Acts 7, I believe it is. Or 8. 8, I think it is. Just before Paul got saved. Acts 8. And go see what he was reading in his chariot. I don't think he would have a full scroll. And maybe Philip gave him some information too. That servant, that child of God went home and witnessed the gospel. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria. There's the ones that took Israel captive. And you can't find them today. They're gone. And Assyria were fierce. You think Muslims are bad? You read the military antics of the Assyrians and their form of torture. It almost limits there with the Roman Catholics and Christians. And will make Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, a desolation and a dry like a wilderness. Why? Because Jonah didn't want to preach to them because they were a nation against Jonah's people. And I knew God was going to be gracious. And this is a nation that got right, that had a revival under the king. Everybody wanted to do right. And yet, Assyria and Nineveh are gone. Yeah, we had great revivals in America. It's our history. And we're going to fall because of sin. Stop relying on the old. Get with the new. Get with the old gospel. Stop with the tricks. Stop with the antic. Stop trying to do it the world's way. And preach the gospel and live for today. Those old revivals ain't going to do you nothing today. They might set you on fire as an individual, but they're not going to do anything for the world. Imagine if these people, oh, remember back when the king and all that, when that man Jonah came, we all got right? Yeah, and now they're going to be destroyed. Nineveh had a revival. It's gone. They're gone. America had a revival, a couple of them. She's not gone, but she will be gone. And flocks, uh, sheep, goats, some birds are called flocks too, shall lie down in the midst of her, Nineveh. All the beasts of the nations that were Gentile beasts, both the cormorant, that's a bird, that's why I said flocks, could be a bird too. And the bitter shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. I didn't look that word up. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Heavenly bird songs. Except for that one bird that wakes me up every morning. We got a bird here down the floor and he just keeps it. Birdie, birdie, birdie. It's like, I know you're a birdie. Shut up. But they're going to sing. And if it's in the millennium, they're going to sing a song that's not under the curse. What do you think that's going to sound like? When a bird's, I mean, there are, we call them Walmart birds. They got the most 
oh, godforsaking call ever. You hear him, it's like, what, what did you do to anger God to get that call? Even they'll be without the curse. You just may have in the millennium a sympathy. Sympathy. No, that's, I'm not trying to. The musical sympathy of birds singing under no curse. It's just going to be heavenly. The song says when Jesus was in the garden, even the birds hushed their singing. That's our creator. Show him respect. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, the doors. Something about those thresholds. God told you put blood upon the threshold. Dagon fell down at the threshold. For he shall uncover the cedar work. Now if anything like the temple, Solomon built the temple and, and had cedar wood and then he overlaid it with gold. It may also be idols. Or he's just going to break the building apart. This is the rejoicing city that dwelleth carelessly, Nineveh. That said in her heart, I am. Well, that's God. God, yes, yes, uh, Moses. When Israel asked your name, I am that I am. America's there. What's that song? I am the champion. I am number one. America's there. And there is none beside me. Sound like a little pride to me from Nineveh. Now, how is she become desolate, become a desolation? Because she was prideful. She was, did not listen to God. She didn't repent like they did in Jonah's time. A place for beasts to lie down in. You know what happens when men move out? Animals multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply. Everyone that passes by her shall hiss and wag his head like, man, like, what on earth happened to that place? Yeah. Astonishment, amazement that what God can do. 